with former President Trump announcing on Truth Social this morning that he's going to be arrested next Tuesday by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and calling for protests. What other candidates might have a shot in 2024? Specifically, what are the chances for a third party candidate? And would that person just prove to be a spoiler? The organization No Labels has been working with what it calls great determination to provide an option to nominate an independent presidential candidate in 2024. Writing for the New York Times, David Brooks reported recently that No Labels operation is a $70 million effort, of which $46 million has already been raised or pledged. The media has reported No Labels has secured a ballot place in three states for the next presidential cycle, Colorado, Arizona, and Oregon. The group has submitted petitions in several others and says its goal is to be on the ballot in all 50 states. It has identified 23 where it believes its unity ticket could win a plurality of the vote, which would suffice to win the Electoral College. This news is alarming to some Democrats who think the effort could split the Democratic vote and ensure a GOP victory. In response, No Labels released a statement clarifying its role. Quote, No Labels has said this is an insurance policy. In the event both major parties nominate presidential candidates that the vast majority of Americans don't want. If this happens, No Labels will itself not run a candidate, but we will have a launching pad specifically in the form of ballot access across the country. Well, by that measure, this could become reality. Consider that Joe Biden's nomination as the Democratic candidate would seem a certainty should he run, and all polls have Donald Trump currently leading the GOP field. But polls also show that many Americans don't want either. A post-ABC poll finds 58 percent of Democrats or Democratic-leaning independents say they prefer someone other than Biden as their nominee in 2024, almost double the 31 percent who support Biden. Among Republicans and Republican-leaning independents, 49 percent say they prefer their nominee to be someone other than Trump, compared with 44 percent who favor him. Among those who think that this could benefit Trump is Paul Begala, the Democratic strategist and CNN political commentator. Begala wrote this, here's the simple political reality as I see it. In recent elections, most voters who reject extremism have tended to vote Democratic. This means the vast majority of votes that a no-labels presidential candidate would receive would likely come out of President Joe Biden's pool of potential voters, not former President Donald Trump's, assuming the 2024 election turns out to be a rematch. Remember, in 2020, President Biden won three states by less than one percentage point. This week, a think tank called Third Way published a memo cautioning that the No Labels plan will only hurt Democrats, citing the similar spoiler effect in recent elections of alternative candidates Jill Stein and Gary Johnson. It warned, quote, rather than producing a third party ticket that would defy the overwhelming odds and win, No Labels is on track to field a spoiler who would reelect Trump or a Trump-like Republican. In response, No Labels posted a statement that read in part, no one at No Labels has any interest in fueling a spoiler effort. Joining me now to discuss former Ohio congressman and senatorial candidate Tim Ryan, who himself ran for president in 2020. He's currently a senior visiting fellow at Third Way. Congressman, nice to see you. Namaste, namaste. I am part of the 44 percent who identify as independent. What about us? Don't we get a seat at the table? Yeah, absolutely have a seat at the table, and you'll have a choice. Uh, I think the idea here is not just should we have third-party candidates. I think most Americans believe we should have more choices, not less. But you have to view this in the context of an anti-democratic movement happening in the country. And to put someone in place that would tilt the balance towards the insurrectionists, uh, towards the people who don't believe in democracy, towards the people who think that democracy should die and we should put a Caesar in charge for a few years to figure things out, and that's exactly who these people are, I think is a big, big mistake. So if you believe in America, if you believe in democracy, uh, you should not be fielding a third-party candidate in this election. You want to do it for House and Senate, congressional races, local races, and maybe presidential races down the road. Not this time. Okay, we're still arguing, I think, about whether Ross Perot pulled more from Papa Bush or Bill Clinton back in the 92 cycle. Are you so sure that this would harm Joe Biden as compared to Donald Trump in 2024 if we get a rematch? Well, I think Paul Begala, as, as always, uh, hit the nail right on the head. You know, people are voting against the extremists. And so those anti-extremist votes 
if they if they get split in any way, shape, or form, it tilts the balance towards the anti-democratic movement that's happening in the country. And it's really very, very clear. And you see Liz Cheney, you see uh, Adam Kinzinger, these, these Republicans who have courage, who stood up to the anti-democratic movement, those voters, uh, even in Ohio when I ran, uh, Michael, we got 400,000 split ticket voters who voted for a Republican president or a Republican governor and a Democrat for Senate here in Ohio because they didn't want to support the anti-democratic movement happening. And, and that's kind of what's happening. You throw a third party spoiler in there, it's going to tilt the balance towards the, the MAGA crowd, the anti-democratic crowd, the people who are defending Michael, defending the people who stormed the Capitol and are raising money for their legal funds, like those are the people that are going to be in charge of the government. And I just think in this particular election, we can't have that. Okay, I hear you. I, don't let my silence be interpreted as agreement, because I truly am one of those 44 percent that they try and say, well, yeah, but you lean one way or the other. And I, I think we, too, need a voice. I have to ask you, as a prominent national Democratic figure, to react to this news of the day that Donald Trump says, I'm going to get arrested on Tuesday. Uh, I don't think a lot of us who've been watching uh, Donald Trump and his family operate over the last few years are going to be surprised by it. Uh, clearly, they were doing all kinds of stuff. You look at Rudy, Rudy Giuliani, uh, you, you look at his campaign managers, his campaign team, and what they were, uh, Paul Manafort and others who were surrounding him for such a long period of time, members of the Trump organization. I can't say anybody's going to be surprised by this, but we have to be very disciplined as, as good citizens and say, follow the law, right? He He... If he did wrong, he should be prosecuted like any guy in Youngstown, Ohio, who did wrong. Uh, but he should also have due process, and th this needs to play out. And you're a lawyer, and you understand this. He has every right as a citizen to have due process. And, and if, if it goes down the road, which it looks like it's going to, of uh, a prosecution uh, and eventually a conviction, then that should be based on the merits of the case, not on the fact that we disagree with his political issues or anything else. So this has to be by the book, by the law, and it is, and uh, we'll see where it ends up. But nobody should be surprised by this. Doesn't the partisan side of you wish that it had been Fulton County or Jack Smith, meaning Merrick Garland, and not the sex case from New York? I got no comment on that, uh, Michael, but, you know, the, the reality is this this person, Donald Trump, has done a lot of wrong in a lot of areas, in a lot of states. And, you know, I am can't Monday morning quarterback who's doing what. I do wish that there were Republican leaders who had courage, which many, many have not in the last few years when it comes to Donald Trump. Those leaders, whether they're attorney generals in, in those states uh, who balked at, at, at trying to actually administer the law and enforce the law. Uh, but you have somebody uh, in Manhattan here that sounds like they're going to do it. And, you know, we should just be glad that no citizen, no matter how rich, no matter how powerful, even one that's a former president is above the law. No one in America is above the law. And we're going to find that out this week. I'm limited on time, but is, is that a young Tim Ryan with RFK behind you? It's hard for me to see. <laughs> uh, no, it's a coal miner in West Virginia. <laughs> It's one of the great political pictures of all time uh, of Bobby Kennedy campaigning with, with coal miners. Uh, and we've had this conversation before, Michael. That's where Democrat uh, leaders need to be. They need to be putting their arms around coal miners and steel workers and, and working class people in the South, uh, white, black, brown, gay, straight, go after these workers. And that's what Bobby Kennedy did. And that's why I keep this picture up here, just as a, as a great reminder of when the Democratic Party's at its best, uh, it's putting its arms around yeah, coal miners that, that got coal ash and, and all kinds of other stuff around them. So I, I keep it here as a reminder. Congressman, thank you. Appreciate you coming back. Thank you. Social media.